Hey, welcome back to another video. Today we're at Budrum Falls. We're going to be shooting macro. I've got the Nissi close-up lens adapter and I've also got my vintage Canon FD100 macro lens that I've been wanting to play with. Um, so you're going to be looking for something really small, so roots and some mosses and stuff like that. It hasn't rained much, so it's pretty dry, so hopefully I can find something. I've found a on the walk down to the falls, there's a couple of root systems with beautiful little ferns and stuff hanging around them, and that's probably what I'm after. But being macro, you've really got to isolate that spot right down. So, see if we can get some good light and a good couple of good little subjects. All right, let's hit that intro. Well, Tricky, but yeah, the lens is really good actually. Um, I've got my first little shot here. This little flower, I don't know if you can see it right down here, little purple flower. Finding something small enough, I think, is the hardest part with macro is to try and find a, a subject matter that's actually small enough that you can bring to life because I looked at a couple of ferns just over there because the light was coming off them and even this size and like little even these leaves, they're too big because you'd, you'd basically have to do like a 30 shot focus stack just to get something like that in focus with that macro. So that's something, you just, and that's why I don't mind doing this because it sort of resets your head a little bit. Because you think macro, you're thinking small, but then your macro is just a total different level. So even with this flower, I've probably got 70, 80% of it in focus. I'm shooting at, I'm pretty sure it's F32, so that's to try and get as much in as I possibly can, so it's a little tricky one, so definitely different, but good, good one for the first shot in the bag, and it came up pretty good, so we'll uh, gonna shoot down and see if I can get something, most of the good stuff seems to be right next to the water, and I didn't bring me, uh, my waterproof boots today, so I don't really want to get it saturated. Yeah, I'll see if I can find some other stuff, maybe some moss and some more colour and let's see what else we can find. Right here. Yeah. Good stuff. Radio. So just finished shooting just this little branch here. It's got the moss on it, it's got some different colours, some, some darker patches and some oh, some darker patches and lighter patches just in here. At least I reckon 12 shots it took to focus stack that section there, at least. I'll have to count them up when I get in there, but I've bracketed and it came up really good. It looks, it looks the depth of field is amazing, that's one thing with macro, so we've got the fall off here off the side of the the root system falling off and then that then all blows out so all you can it really highlights and accentuates that texture and those those patterns in the little root so very very cool um, I think that one actually come up really nice just looking back at the photos there's some really nice patterns and the textures and if you sort of Think about that focus once it's all in, once I focus stack it all in Photoshop, it's going to come up really good. So, yeah, very, very cool. That one, that one I'm pretty happy with. Hopefully, it all works out well. <laughs> See what happens when it gets into Photoshop. There was some really good light just coming down here. So, I was just focusing in up in this section just here isolated down to just this you see where my finger is just that tiny little moss there that's where we were basically focusing on so just one little focus point it's in the shade now but before it just had light on it so it came up really good and with those textures of the the bark and then with the moss on there uh, yeah pretty happy yeah it's a, definitely an art to it it's something you, you need to practice a lot and again, I, I think I've said it before in the last video we did with the macro with the 100 to 400 RF. You, it really resets your thinking to what you're looking at. 
macro and it's sort of good to do just slip that into not all the time i think you'd get after a while you'd get sick of looking so small and my love of landscape photography but just to be able to just sort of sit there and focus on it really resets your brain and your thinking into the photography and what you're looking at to, to try and find composition <laughs> Okay, for this shot, I'll show you the back of the screen with this camera shortly, but you can see here this little white section and then, and then the moss here and then these little borderline little branches. So I'm just using uh, this one here is a border tree and then also this one here is a border tree. Uh, that's, that's framing the image up and again, just that texture and the, and the different shades of colours in these roots with that beautiful moss. Um, I've fo done a focus stack, I've done about five shots focus stacked in, so I'll get in the inside here in that back depth. So I've got a bit of focus as well, so I can try a focus stack if I need to. I don't think it needs it. What I'll do is I can, I'll switch over to the video on here, and then I should be able to talk to you a little bit more about the composition. So you can see here, that's my main subject, that little bit of moss just here. Very cool, and then I've got it framed up with this little stick, and then that stick over this side. So if you, that, uh, that's sort of the, the image we're looking at. You can see what the focus, how little my focus zone is. I've got basically there, that's my focus zone there. And then you can see how quickly it drops off out here. It's just blurred out completely and just drops off like it's it's really not that fast, probably a centimetre from that from this stick here to the back to in here. But it, where I've got my highlighting, which is basically on that little bit of moss just here, from there to there it just completely obliterates it. So very good and also very challenging because you've got to get that either use use it as a depth of field instrument or a lots of focus stacking luckily photoshop makes the focus stacking inside okay but you've got to make sure when you go do your focus stacking that when you're going to get your shots you get enough shots to cover all the different focus points so you can see that's just barely moving the lens the focus on the lens and how many with the red how much stuff stays in focus it's just a really fine knife's edge realistically and then that's back out at focus and where my target so I thought that was a good little one to show you just how interesting with the macro what you're really looking at and if I swap back over to the G7X so you can see what we were just looking at on the R6 and then actually how big the section is <clears throat> just here so that's realistically all we're looking at massive on the screen on the R6 but when you look at it at human scale it's really really tiny but uh Found another little shot, little mushroom, which is all the rage at the moment. Sort of a bit, bit cliche, but why couldn't I? Why not? Well, we're here. Hopefully, thanks to Al, Albert or Winston, I should be able to get in here without damaging anything. That's the other thing. Just when you start looking at the macro landscape you start thinking about the macro landscape as a place so my little mushrooms just down in here at the base of this palm tree just sitting in the moss got some good light on the moment so going to duck right into it and then uh, I'll come back once I've got a shot and we'll have a bit of a chat okay so there's a little fellow we're looking at and you can see it's just the perfect little spot just sit on a little root system of this palm tree with some moss and ferns around it. And uh, yeah, it's pretty spectacular actually. 
can see here on recording um, what we're looking at there. So I've got the video here on the R6 shooting in towards the mushroom. And you can see just perfect little uh, composition. It would be pretty hard to find something that sits out that nice. So that the mushroom is just sitting there surrounded by, I guess you could call it foliage, but it's not really. It's really small. Just a baby little fern here, um, some grass, and then these, just the root system, and then this gorgeous little moss. And then we're getting light rays coming down, bouncing off the tree, which is then highlighting the mushroom as well. So it, uh, it's come up really good. I'm really, really happy with this. I'm hoping this is probably going to get some more shots here. I've focus stacked it. So it took me two, two different focuses to get the top of the mushroom, just here, here at the top, and then a third one for the stem of the little mushroom. So obviously I just want the mushroom as the main subject. That's the, the, the idea. Um, there is some fern over here which I'm looking at, but I don't really want that in focus. I, I just want to try and make sure I've got enough of the mushroom. So I'll probably get a few more shots, play with some different settings on the for the light. So you can see the light on the mushroom there is pretty harsh, even though it's not really nasty light coming through. There's enough light there at because it's, we're shooting the macro that it's it does sort of blow it out I guess a little bit so just something to be aware of I did bring some lights with me so if you're doing stuff in the dark always have some lights or even have them anyway and I might try and even bring some light underneath the mushroom to to help help with the focus side of the stem as well so that's what I'm going to do next I've got my little loom cube so I can sit down just down here put that on a low setting and just bounce it off up underneath the mushroom and then see if we can get some light that way Last little composition, I think, for the day. Um, probably, well, you might be able to see it just here on the on the screen. This little flower through here, little purple flower. Uh, you can see all the the veins of the leaf in there, which is really cool. Again, it to the green leaves that surrounding it, it just blows it right out. So that's the beauty of macro. You really get that that sense of depth involved in it which is good as you can see down here I've got my little loom cube which is just facing up and just making sure I've got enough light on it I don't have any light rays coming through it so it's pretty important with macro that you, you have enough light obviously you're looking at something very very small so you it's hard to get enough light on there to do it you want to have a decent shutter speed because any little movement and because I've got Winston here in the water you can see there's just little micro vibrations so I think I've got my settings at uh, 1 25th of a second and I'm a little concerned if anything that there might be some movement just purely the water trickling past the tripod is enough just to when you're shooting that small even though it's all locked down you can still get that little little any little sudden movement is enough just to throw it out of focus and blur it when you're looking at something so small so that's something to consider so try and if you can having this light here i can up the i can crank that up if i need to and go up to an even brighter setting not too close i don't really want to blow it out but then it allows me to come up and i can change that that's my change it setting up to say 125th like a normal handheld shot 
give it a little bit of ISO. I should bring it back out. And now I've got a really steady shot that I can use. If, if you do have any movement, if you notice any movement, you, having the light there, you wouldn't be able to do that without the light, so it makes a big difference. Right, yeah, we're done and dusted here. Hope you enjoyed this little video. A little bit of macro, this beautiful old vintage FD lens. 100 mil, gorgeous lens. Uh, one point, well, one to four ratio macro, so it's not a super powerful, but it's enough like for this. That's that little leaf, little flower fills a whole frame, so definitely enough if you're into macro. And it only cost me, I think, about under 100 bucks Australian on eBay, so you can still get some quality gear in the vintage range if you want to go and play with some macro. Another good option, we did look at the Nissi close-up kit. I did bring that with me, but I really wanted to focus on this today, and it's another good option, those vintage lenses, to go and have a play with. All right, I'll see you all next week. Have it, stay safe. Peace.